NVIDIA is getting in on the local chatbot game that runs on your computer. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the big trends in LLMs right now is to try to put them in new contexts rather than just being a cloud-based bot. Specifically, people are looking into things like personalization, how they allow individuals and businesses to have LLMs that reference their own data. Two, many companies and products are also looking at how to get LLMs running on mobile phones or PCs in either a fully offline or hybrid cloud on device sort of way. This is, of course, where Apple's efforts are. Samsung and Google and the other handset makers are thinking in similar ways. And now it appears so too is NVIDIA. They've recently announced NVIDIA Chat with RTX, which they call your personalized AI chatbot. They write, Chat with RTX is a demo app that lets you personalize a GPT LLM connected to your own content, docs, notes, videos, and other data. Leveraging RAG, you can query a custom chatbot to quickly get contextually relevant answers. And because it all runs locally on your Windows RTX PC or workstation, you'll get fast and secure results. So like I said, there are a lot of projects that are working on something similar right now, but obviously a company at NVIDIA size and scale doing so shows what a big deal this is. Brian Romley writes, Boom! Open source chat with RTX is here and I am testing it now. You can feed it YouTube videos and your own documents to create summaries and get relevant answers based on your data. This is a massive challenge to OpenAI. Now for those of you who are interested in this space, one project that I am watching is Open Interpreter. Open Interpreter frames themselves as a new way to use computers. Let LLMs run code on your computer to complete tasks. You can check it out at openinterpreter.com. Now, staying on the theme of NVIDIA and AI chips for a minute, we recently got comments from Jensen Huang saying that he didn't think that it was going to take the $7 trillion that Sam Altman has apparently been talking about to meet the world's compute needs. Part of the reason for that is that he said he expected prices to come down, and now the CEO of Databricks has said something very similar. For those unfamiliar, Databricks is a company that helps big enterprises and software use AI. It's competitive with, for example, Amazon Bedrock. They're very invested in the idea that there won't be one winner-take-all sort of LLM, but lots and lots of different solutions that run the gamut from open source to closed source that can meet any different company's particular needs. The CEO of that company, Ali Godsey, said recently that just as internet bandwidth constraints evaporated in the 2000s, quote, the same thing will happen with GPUs. Now, part of where this came from was a comment in an interview where he said, the challenging thing is a lot of these startups started on a weird funding or GPU commitment model that I think is going to pose an extra challenge to them going forward. We're going to see a lot of turbulence in the next 12 months because of that. Going further, he said, people were buying these GPUs and doing Bitcoin mining on them. Then Ethereum decided to switch the model and they didn't need GPUs anymore. But then it turned out that OpenAI is training gigantic models and we do need GPUs after all. Then there was this one vendor, NVIDIA, and everybody rushed to get these GPUs. There's been such crazy scarcity, but in the 2000s, there was a similar thing around bandwidth. It turned out that actually capitalism, supply and demand takes care of that problem, and the price of bandwidth just plummeted, and bandwidth was abundant everywhere. The same thing will happen with GPUs. So then, what happens to the startups that do GPU money laundering, which is when they get huge funds from big strategic investors? The valuation of those companies were high because they had to raise hundreds of millions of dollars just for the GPUs. So what happens when the price of those comes down, then there's people that are sitting with three-year commitments on these GPUs. That's going to pose a big challenge for anyone who's overcommitted on the GPU spend side. The whole interview with the information is pretty fascinating, and I highly recommend it. And even if Aldi is right, Wall Street is still very focused on that bottleneck that exists here and now. In the week since UK chip designer Arm Holdings announced its latest financial results, their stock price has nearly doubled, up 98%. Unrivaled Investing on Twitter wrote, My broader conclusion is that there's a huge mismatch between demand and supply for AI stocks, and this is translating into absurd valuations where the companies can still grow a lot, but due to lofty prices, the shareholders likely lose. The reality is that the winners of the AI revolution will be far spread and not concentrated in just a few players. The challenge for these investors is that a lot of these initiatives and companies are still very early days. Now, moving over to the new product side of things for a moment, a couple really interesting things. Cohere has introduced Aya, which they call a state-of-the-art model and dataset pushing the boundaries of multilingual AI for 101 languages. The project involved 3,000 independent researchers, 56 language ambassadors, and people from 119 countries, and is meant to try to advance multilingual AI, given that much of the state-of-the-art in LLMs is, of course, developed in English right now. Stability introduced a new open source text to image model called Stable Cascade that some are arguing is the best open source text to image model yet. They write During our evaluations, we found Stable Cascade performs best in both prompt alignment and aesthetic quality in almost all model comparisons. As with most stability releases, Stable Cascade is now available on a non commercial license. Quick update on the legal side earlier this week, a U.S. district judge dismissed four of the claims in the Sarah Silverman lawsuit against OpenAI. 
The dismissed allegations include vicarious copyright infringement, violations of the DMCA, negligence, and unjust enrichment. But the judge did allow Silverman and her co-plaintiff's core claim of direct copyright infringement to move forward. The plaintiffs now have a month to amend their class action suit in response to this ruling. So friends, never a dull moment in AI. If you want to hear more about the latest moves at OpenAI, including new features for ChatGPT and a majorly high-profile researcher leaving the company, come back soon for the main AI breakdown.